What if I told you success on eBay wasn't about having the biggest store size possible? What if being a small eBay seller is actually your secret weapon? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna break down the five reasons why I believe these small eBay stores have the opportunity to have an unfair advantage. And if you're new to selling on eBay, if you're thinking about just getting started with eBay, this video is for you. So firstly, what is a small eBay store? Well, I would say it's anything between zero to 200 active listings. Hopefully you've had a bit of a look around the house and you've been able to find some items that you haven't had to pay for to list up and sell. And then now you've started to dabble into going out to places like thrift stores, flea markets, garage sales to try and buy items to sell for a profit. Now, if I think back to my journey of zero to 200 listings, I was completely clueless. I had two thoughts when I was buying my stock. One, was it cheap? And two, get a lot of it because you've got to build up a store to generate sales. And that was really a very basic, but also very poor mindset uh, when it comes to sourcing stock to sell onto eBay. So I, I actually watched a HBO documentary from Warren Buffett, one of the great investors. He's, he's obviously invested his entire life, made millions and millions of dollars. He's a billionaire. Um, and he's got some really, really useful advice around the way he went about choosing the stock to, for him to go ahead and purchase. I've got a little clip for you here. Ted Williams wrote a book called The Science of Hitting. And in The Science of Hitting, he's got a diagram, shows him at the plate, and he's got the strike zone divided into 77 squares, each the size of a baseball. And he says, if I only swing it pitches in my sweet zone, which he shows there, and he has what his batting average would be, which is 400. If he had to swing at low outside pitches, but still in the, in the strike zone, his average would be 230. He said the most important thing in hitting is waiting for the right pitch. Now, he was at a disadvantage because if the count was 0-2 or 1-2 or so on, even if that ball was down where he was only going to bat 230, he had to swing at it. In investing, there's no called strikes. People can throw Microsoft at me and you know, you, you name it, any, any stock, General Motors, uh, and I don't have to swing. And nobody's going to call me out on call strikes. I only get a strike called if I swing at a pitch and miss. So I can wait there and look at thousands of companies day after day, and only when I see something I understand, and when I like the price at which it's selling, then if I swing, if I, if I hit it fine, if I miss it, 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 it it's, it's, it's a strike. In fact, I've told students, if when they got out of school, they got a punch card with 20 punches on it, and that's all the investment decisions they got to make in their entire life. They would get very rich because they would think very hard about each one, and you don't need 20 right decisions to get very rich. You know, four or five will probably do it over time. All right, so in eBay terms, what Warren's speaking about there is sell-through rate and average sale price, and that's been two of the metrics that I have focused on so heavily in 2024 and it's had a huge advantage. I've, I've been able to streamline my eBay business, become so much more efficient and that is what you're able to do as a small eBay seller right from the very beginning. You won't have to do the six month process that I went through with shit on the shelf. We had 2,800 items in here and when I looked at sell through rate and average sale price, I realized I had to clean out about 1,600 items. So that was a big step but it was a healthy step and it was unfortunately just due to past mistakes. Uh, that allowed me to, to have to go ahead and do that process. So we only have 1,200 items in store right now and I'm much more confident with the 1,200 items that we've got. You really wanna be working off the metric of one sale for every 100 listings. So if you've got a small eBay store with 100 listings in it, you wanna be a daily eBay seller at that point. You wanna be having one sale every single day and if you're not, I wouldn't try and grow too much past where you're currently at. I would just focus on the items that you've got. I would work on title. I would work on the price points of those 100 listings to try and start to generate with that 100 quantity, one sale every single day. So when you're out and about, you're in these thrift stores, the Warren Buffett analogy of just sitting out there going, should I swing? Should I make a swing at this product? Just because it's there, just because it's cheap, in eBay terms, is it a great product? Does it have a great sell-through rate? When I check the active listings on eBay, is it selling for equal, if not greater? Is the is this, um, sell-through rate really for me, I work off about 50%. Um, so if there were 50 listings in, in eBay and then there were 25 sales or more, I would probably go ahead and make the purchase. Obviously the greater percentage, the better. If there were 50 listed and 50 sold, then that's even better. Um, so that's a metric around sell-through rate that I'm always focusing on to make sure I'm happy to go ahead with the item. And then the other one is average sale price. We've been trying to work on $40 or more. So that's sort of a typical range of price point that I'm trying to find. I don't want to buy the cheap stuff. I want it to be $40 plus. And then I use the e-profit calculator to determine whether or not there's enough profit 
on that sale price based on what I'm seeing the opportunity to purchase the item as. Now, all of that right there, if I had known that when I had a very small eBay store and I just uh, one by one, product by product, built up an eBay store with just those items and I saw a sell-through rate of one or two sales a day in the early stages, that would have been a huge advantage for me. So if you're in that point right now or if you're thinking about just getting started, they are the numbers, they are the metrics to focus on when it comes to sourcing product and you'll be well on your way to have success straight away. The next reason is you've got time. It's such an advantage to only have to list up 14 listings a week if you're doing two listings a day. I would go ahead and make sure I'm doing that in just one listing session or two listing sessions of seven items each. Um, it would take you no more than an hour or two and you could be really, really methodical about every single part of the listing process that is just so crucial to getting your items sold. You can make sure that your title is completely dialed in. I think the biggest important aspect of your listing is your price. And I think if you pay the uh, time and attention to just really just filter the highest price of your product that's sold in the past to the lowest item, and the sale price of that and then compare a mid-range price point, I think you're gonna have huge success on eBay by just doing that research and putting those minutes into working out what your price point should be. I would just aimlessly go about just putting in price points back when I first started and I'd be basically pricing myself out of the opportunity to sell the item. Um, so just being really methodical about that step and that number, that dollar value that you put in, um, have it being competitive in the marketplace at the time that you list it, uh, is gonna be crucial to get that sale turnaround. Uh, but photos, creating a nice listing setup, having a nice trestle table, some box lights, taking multiple photos, just spending the time to dial that process in as an early seller um, is crucial because when you, get, when you get going and things start moving and you're doing a lot more listings, if that's even ever gonna be your goal, um, you, you do start to shirk things. You start to make little mistakes, you cut corners, um, things don't get done efficiently or as direct or as dialed in as they possibly can be. You might skip an item specific here and there because you've just got so many more listings to get on with. You don't do a methodical thorough research of the product and the price point you should be selling it for. Um, but when you're small, when you're zero to 200 listings and you're listing two items a day, you can spend all the time in the world to dial that listing in to be the best that it can be. And then chances are it's gonna go on to sell. Now one of the biggest limitations when it comes to being an eBay seller is outgrowing the space that you're in. I'm in a little garage here and I've been an eBay seller for four years. There was a point though when we had 2,800 items that this room was full, I had a third bedroom that was full and I was starting to think I should probably go and put a shed out the back. And then I realized, hold on a minute, is all of the stuff that I have here even that good? And that's obviously when I went ahead and I removed 1,600 items and suddenly I've got an empty spare bedroom, I don't have a shed out the back and I've got so much more room to grow. Um, so that would be a huge step for you as a zero to 200 seller. You don't have the constraints and the worries around storage and trying to put things into their right places um, because you've only got a few items. You can put them into the cupboard at your own home and that's probably enough for you to house all of your product. And if they're turning over at a really quick space of time, you probably don't even need to outgrow that. Uh, until you want to obviously get larger. Now, I'm in a five by three garage. It's a single car garage. It houses 1200 items. It is pretty full in here, uh, but I don't have any intentions to outgrow it. And I do hope to ma maybe improve my eBay store even more and generate even more profit for myself um, out of this space. I think I can grow it to 150,000 in revenue. We're doing 130,000 right now. So there is opportunity for you as a small seller to remain that way, to not have to spend additional money on things like storage units and, and blow yourself up and, and ultimately grow in inventory more so than you're actually growing in daily sales. I think that can happen all too often. Um, people outgrow their space, but they're not actually taking the time to see if every single one of their products is a good one. Um, so by being small, it's stress-free. You just throw it in the cupboard. Um, you don't have to look at it until something sells and the inventory setup and the process of finding your items as well, which can sometimes be daunting if you don't have a good SKU system in place with a bigger store, um, you don't have to worry about because you've only got a few tubs to house your items. Four, now this is a big one. You're not gonna burn out, which I've felt at, at multiple times along the journey of trying to grow this thing and trying to make enough money to survive because for four years, it's been my sole occupation is being an eBay seller, talking about it here on YouTube. So I've always had that daunting mindset that I need to be more, I need to grow more, I need to sell more. And, and that's obviously a stress that can often burn people out. I often hear on the back end of trying to get everybody involved with selling on eBay, I get them coming to me saying, Matt, I'm moving into state, I'm having a baby, I'm just ultimately giving up 
on the eBay journey that I once had really big dreams for. And I think a lot of the times it's because of the steps that I've just spoken to you about when they were in that small early day setup of zero to 200, they weren't doing it in the best possible way. And that caused them to grow far too much. It caused them to burn out because they were seeing their store size grow, but they weren't seeing their sales grow. And that can be really limiting in the mindset. Um, you're going, oh my God, I'm growing massively, but I'm not selling anything. This is all too hard. This is overwhelming. I've got way too much stock in here. Is it even worth it? Because it doesn't seem to sell. I'm out. Hey, Matt, thanks for getting me involved with email. Do you want to come and buy my stock? And then I say, yes, absolutely. I come over and I make sure I'm listing up the right items out of their inventory. I'm getting rid of the rest of the stuff that isn't great. And I'm getting those items that are good actually able to sell because I've got a solid listing plan where I'm listing up my items every single day and I'm not growing past what my store size is. Um, so that causes burnout. And when you're a small eBay store, zero to 200 listings, you're not gonna get burnt out because you're only doing a small amount of work each week. You're only listing up 14 items. You're only going out to source 14 items. I wouldn't try and excessively source when you're a small seller like that. I would just buy the 14 items that you need, be very methodical about what they are, list them up and then go out again and buy again. With good sales that will come in as a result of buying the right product, you're not really gonna get burnt out. You're actually gonna be motivated because you're gonna see the sales continually come through and you're just gonna to wanna to do more. So yeah, burnout, big one that you're gonna avoid by being a small seller. I can almost guarantee if you grow, 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 the burnout will come into it at some point in time. The other big reason is that you've built the foundation at this point, zero to 200 listings, you've got the foundation there to be able to scale correctly, which a lot of us obviously don't do based on what I've just previously said. So um, being able to scale from that point, you can get to three to four to 500 listings, you can get in three to four to five sales every single day uh, because you're buying the right product, you've got a consistent listing habit and you're doing all those little things right. So look, I think outside of that, it is though when it does come to scaling, a case of looking into the fact of your, your your psychology, the characteristics of your own DNA. Do you have the discipline? Do you have the consistency, the perseverance, the work ethic to slowly go about building up your store? Having patience is one of the biggest things for the determinant of whether or not you're gonna be successful on eBay because this process doesn't happen overnight. To generate 200 listings in your store that are generating two sales every single day may take you up to a year to be able to achieve that. That's gonna be really, really tricky considering you're putting in 14 listings every single week. It's gonna take a while to build it up to 200. You're also gonna be selling a bit along the way. So it's gonna take you a very, very long time to get there. It's the answer. It's what you should be doing, but can you actually do it? Are you patient enough? Are you disciplined enough? Can you go through the, I guess, the mental fatigue of dealing with the process of learning and doing? That's the biggest thing that I've had to try and tackle over the last four years. I'm still here now. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm proof that even going about it and making a, a whole lot of mistakes along the way, as I've discussed in this video, I'm still able to re-go about setting it up correctly and continue going on to sell for enough profit to keep myself alive. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video, guys. Um, zero to 200, hopefully you're killing it as a small eBay seller out there. Let me know what your plans are with selling on eBay and go and check out this video right here because it is a good one. We'll see you over there.